Now I can actually start living from trading. And from that moment on, I literally just quit working a normal day job and, and, and transitioned into trading. I had the pleasure of interviewing one of the best cryptocurrency traders in the world, Mike Williams. And he was sharing how he went from a normal guy with a day job, just investing in Bitcoin at the all time high to becoming one of the best traders in the world and how he transitioned from his day job to trading full time. He's also going to share some of his outlooks on the market and trading strategies. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications because I know you're going to enjoy this one. This is Mike Williams, an amazing trader, a fellow trader. And Mike, I'm honored to have you on the channel, man. How are you doing today? Hello, guys. Yeah, thank you very much for your invitation. I'm doing really, really well. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to, uh, to come and, uh, and, and join you for a little bit. Looking forward. Yeah. So if anybody, if anyone out there is unfamiliar with Mike, you got to check him out. He's one of literally one of the best traders in the world. And uh, I'm just honored to have him on the show. So Mike, I want to talk to you about, first of all, how you got into crypto, how you got into trading, how you got from where you started to where you are right now. That's a really good question because I'm not going to lie to you. The beginning was a little bit uh, vague. So it, there, there has been uh, some time in between when I first got into crypto and when I actually started trading, I had somebody at uh, from Korea over at my place and he was sitting on the couch all day long, smoking a lot of cigarettes, seemingly very stressed until I asked him like, hey man, what, what are you actually doing? He's like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trading this, uh, this crypto coin, um, XRP, Ripple at the time. And um, seeing how stressed he was, I, at the time I thought like, you know, this is not for me. But it did spark a seed. So actually that inspired me to just take a look around. And I was like, you know what? It's been going up all the time. Let's just invest something. And at the time, it was really, really not much. Uh, and obviously, that was around the top. You were just buying Bitcoin on spot, like at the hype. Basically, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> so basically gotcha. just buying and then it went it went down by really a lot and uh, that was the point where i thought like hmm okay now it's down a lot and then i happened to have like a lucky investment which was pretty much at the bottom back then of around three thousand dollars and i saw it going up i really started off with uh, started off with with uh, trying to at the time i didn't know it was called scalping but i was scalping on like the one minute time frame really high leverage and within literally one evening, I made more money than I could ever imagine. Naturally, the day after, I got uh, I got wrecked totally. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I always say the markets are are like a drug dealer. They'll give you that first time for free just to hook you. Yeah, you know. Then the next thing you know, you're robbing your mom's purse so you can enter another hundred x along. <laughs> on Absolutely. Bitcoin. Absolutely. And naturally, you know, that was also the point where I started like, okay, maybe I need to learn a thing or two about it. So naturally on the internet, uh, started getting into tr technical analysis patterns, triangles, and, you know, pretty much uh, what I would what, what I would say where most people start off with tr trying to recognize patterns, trying to trade that. Obviously, over time, this didn't work out for me. And that is really when I really started falling in love with the whole process of reading the markets and trying to trying to essentially predict what the market's going to do uh, next and try and trade from it. So I would say 2018 slash 2019 was there was a moment. I can't remember the exact moment when I really started taking things seriously and really started learning how to make sense of the market. And that marked really the beginning of my trading process, I would say, in crypto. So you've been at this now for like five years, seriously, then? Yeah, yeah. The, I mean, the lear learning curve is absolutely steep. And there's one thing you do need to really, uh, I would say, like what you're doing in order to get really good in something. I think that goes with, with, many, uh, with many different things. Uh, obviously, you come, the, you start trading because the, you see the dollar signs in your mind. Let's be honest. It's what everybody is in it for the tech, right? Initially. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in it for the tech. Blatantly <laughs> open about that. I do not care. Yeah. <laughs>
No, but uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, a, a rough journey. And um, there has just been been a moment where I just simply decide like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. You know, I started making sense of thing of things. And obviously, I didn't start off as a consistently profitable trader at all. You know, there, there has been a, a l- steep learning curve from consistently losing to starting to learn more about the markets to eventually stabilizing my portfolio, learning all about risk management, and then refining that into a certain strategy uh, where eventually I managed to get uh, consistently uh, profitable. Uh, I do get the question quite a lot, actually, like how long did it take you to become consistent? For me, that was uh, just below a year. So it was about 10 to 11 months. Um, But I would also say I do have some, some background uh experiences i actually come from i used to be an artist actually where fibonacci for example is already used a lot so that was already my um my starting point i understood already the the theories behind it and the numbers behind it uh and on top of that i literally spent over 100 hours a week on 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 learning and educating myself outside of my day job that i had at the time wow Uh, so i did put in a significant uh, amount of time which obviously helped speed up the learning curve yeah it's definitely required and like you say you have to thoroughly enjoy technical analysis it's and i know a lot of us traders can relate it, it is fun i i dream about pulling fibs and stuff you know but um that's so interesting so 10 11 months so what would you what would you say because for me i would i would boil everything down um in my own trading journey too, if I, if I could go back and just tell myself at the very beginning, if there just two things to focus on the most would be number one, risk management, and number two, having a strategy period. Like strategy is always being refined, but I believe any strategy, even if it's simple, RSI, Bollinger Bands, if you're applying that consistently with good risk management, is putting you on the path to success. So what would you say are the things that really gave you that edge is it something similar? Um, um, when did it, yeah, I guess, well, when did it click? Because yeah. that's what really clicked for me was strategy plus risk management plus discipline to actually follow it is going to equal success. Yeah. I would say the last thing that you mentioned is the single most important thing. Um, I, I, I would say, uh, you know, risk management and, uh, and um, having a strategy obviously is super, super important. But I think I would add two more things. And the, the first one is um, I was not smart enough at the time to start off with paper trading which is what is recommended by a lot of people. And, you know, obviously I'm not giving financial advice, uh, but I think that helped me quite a bit uh, because you immediately get the experience of actually being in a trade, managing the trade, handling your stop losses in taking profits and all that, which is something that with paper trading, if you're trading with real uh, or with fake money, I wish I would have done that because that would have actually saved me a lot of money in hindsight. Uh, but it did give me the experience to withstand the, the the emotions that come through with it, right? And if you do that with, uh, with money that you can afford to lose, I, literally like very little money, you would still get the full trading experience. So that is what, what I did. And I think that definitely sped up my process by a little bit, albeit it is obviously risky if you don't know anything about the markets. I'm going to have to say that. If you don't know anything about the markets, just start trading with real money right away. Um, yeah, it, it can hurt you, right? So keeping, keeping that amount of funds that you're actually trading with to learn, uh, small risk management obviously is uh, important and a stra- adopt a strategy also. And what I would like to add on top of that is stick with that strategy for a while. Um, what what a lot of people did, including myself when, when I started out, is take a few trades, you know, and then take a few losses and then basically already too soon come to the conclusion that the strategy is not working. So you break up your strategy, switch your strategy and you end up flip-flopping strategy, never really making any, uh, any progress because you basically don't have any real information on how that strategy performs for yourself. So that is what I would like to add on top of that. 
um, on top of obviously the risk management and having a strategy is super, super important. I mean, if you don't have that, uh, then you might as well go to the casino, I would say. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It's funny because I don't know any traders who actually started off with paper trading. I only know traders who started off getting wrecked with real money and then realized I have to I have to take this seriously yeah. or I need to stop. <laughs> Yeah, but that's crypto. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm more referring to the traditional markets and the books that you read initially, right? Uh, they all recommend start with paper trading and everything like that. Right. But I read the books after. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's how most people most people get into this, right? They, yeah, they kind of FOMO into the experience and then realize I, if I don't learn, I'm I'm not going to be here long. So, <laughs> yeah. How did you transition from basically having a a day job and learning to trade to actually full-time trading because that's something a lot of people want yeah. to do yeah yeah the, i i guess i could class myself as a as a pretty decent example from that um and i hope to also inspire other people uh, with this uh, with this story because yes i used to have a full-time day job well four days a week which is pretty much full-time um i also did a master studies at the time full-time and then in all the free hour that wow. I had, I, stu I studied and, and started uh, trading. Obviously, I, I don't come from money. I was not born into money. So I literally had pretty much nothing to really start off with. Uh, but I did. And, um, you know, alerts going off here. <laughs> yeah, we're pumping, um, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good squeeze going on. Uh, we'll dive into that soon, I, I reckon. Um, yeah. But... Um, that transition was, um, yeah, was not easy, you know, in terms of uh, putting so much hours into so many different things and finding the focus to actually actually learn. And also, I have to say, if you can trade and you have capital, it becomes easier to generate money because in the end, money makes money. But if you don't have it, you really need to, you know, seek that consistency and build and more look at the percentages. Um, so what I did was basically saving up as much as I could for my day job whilst learning how to trade. And then eventually I got consistent, uh, consistent during the process. However, for me, I didn't have enough capital, even though I was already profitable after a relatively short time, I wasn't really having the capital available for me to actually make this into a full-time job and pay the bills. Right. So that, that took a little while longer, but I kept on. Uh, keeping trading as a side hustle and uh, eventually uh, I from the profits that I made and you know a part of my salary that I was able to put in at, there uh, there came a point where I finally had like okay these are my these are my statistics and now I can actually start living from trading and from that moment on I literally just quit working a normal day job and 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 transitioned into trading. It didn't happen overnight but it did took a while. Yeah. So I do want to ask you more about your your macro outlook on on Bitcoin because uh you're you're building a swing long right here. My question to you is what do you think is going to happen within the next few months because um when I look at the chart I could see um I I I'm expecting I guess I'm leaning more toward a heavier pullback uh, down to like 25 or below than I am a breakout of this uh, 30 to 33 thousand dollars zone. So, what's what's your your overall outlook like on these higher term timeframes? Because I mean, it's a multi year support resistance flip. You know, 30 percent. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do agree. Uh, I do agree. And I did uh, on that swing trade from lower, I did take profits at uh, at the $30,000 region, right? So I do I do have to agree with you. Uh, we are definitely at high time frame resistance. So taking profits at this region is, is 100% a, a must. I mean, if you're a professional trader, you just simply cannot ignore it, right? It would be really bad practice to not take profits there. Um, so what I would say, I have the... Um, the 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 what works for me is that I'm not only a swing trader. You know, I have the uh, the way that I trade. I'm also able to watch the intraday and uh, daily fluctuations in price. So building a swing trade here is is a completely fresh idea where I'm simply looking. Currently, this is a keep in mind. This is a potential swing trade, right? So I can I'm not classing it as an actual swing trade yet. So there, there is some really important levels 
in in this overall range that we really really need to reclaim in order for me to say like okay now that swing trade is actually valid and we can look for higher targets such as thirty two thousand or maybe even thirty eight thousand uh, dollars at the moment we're definitely not there yet so I would say to class this as a swing trade is indeed quite risky right and therefore I'm first looking for levels within this section where I might be able to take profits um it, depending on the reaction that we're going to get from there such as let's say this um i'll give you an example because i've been building a uh, building a trade here at the lows of this of this section initially also a potential swing trade but the way that we reached this thirty thousand dollars over the weekend and saw that rejection originally was not a take profit target for me but actually i did take quite a significant amount of profit because the reaction looked really, really yeah. bad. Uh, <laughs> Me so too. That... I, I FOMO'd out. And the funny <laughs> thing is I went right before that dump, I, I went live on YouTube and I'm like, Bitcoin's going, I don't know. I gave some target in the title. And as soon as I went live, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had yeah, to FOMO so... out some exactly. profit there. Exactly. And, and we had the same thing over here, right? We had the same thing over here, which also, made me take extra profits as well because uh, simply I did not see what I wanted to see. You know, I wanted to see like this V-shaped type of recovery and simply just a strong continuation. Me too. Um, what I would liked, would have liked to see didn't happen. So instead I just took profits and in, now I've added back on, right? So I'm still work. I would say this swing trade is still in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say so it's uh, um, but yes I 100% agree with you it is um, risky to take a swing trade at high time frame resistance however the reason why I did that is ultimately let's just simplify things a little bit ultimately we are still in a major uptrend a really major uptrend and the most important factors for me is simply we've broken out of this consolidation range that have that has lasted for over six seven months right? We mm -hmm. have really, uh, well, not really, those are just facts. We have bullish market structure, right? We had this consolidation range and now it's evolving into a larger consolidation range. So at the moment, it's a little bit 50-50 where we might break up to. However, if I tie this into the higher time frame context, I would say the probability is higher that we're going to see higher prices than that we're going to drop uh, from here on out it does not mean that it cannot happen, right? So obviously I have my risk management in place. And if this doesn't work out, then, well, it simply doesn't work out. But for now, I'm simply looking at this as a reaccumulation zone before we have another leg uh, up. And simply, unless we close really below this $27,000, $26,000, that would mark the first sign of weakness for me, where I could say like, okay, I was wrong on the idea. It's time to close out of the trade, right? Yeah. Um, you know, but even then we could still go down and retest that $25,000. If we get below those kind of levels, yeah, then, then I really need to, then I need to make a new plan, you know, uh, because then, then the situation really changes drastically. And then I would probably be leaning a little bit more bearish again, depending on how we get there. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, it's cool to, uh, kind of see how you're planning stuff out. So I guess, you're building these traits like slowly over time. So you're, you're not putting your whole position in at once. You're kind of like no. putting bits and bits here, bits there, low leverage. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Especially when swing trading, when day trading, that's simply not an option because then I look for the smaller movements. It doesn't make sense to, you know, put so much, well, <laughs> not putting so much work in a trade is probably the wrong way to phrase it, but to, to spread my entries out over a larger, um consolidation phase for example is right. is a different is a different approach yeah yeah totally different man so are you leaning your 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 macro bullish i guess still because well, of the market structure when you're talking about the real macro bearish i actually think i mean if your question is like are you looking all time highs kind of bullish uh, I would say are you no. looking for are you looking for another move up to maybe like forty thousand? I guess is, is should I should ask the best I'm, case I, scenario. I am. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, the, the the very best case scenario for me, ultimately, I think 
overall, we're still in a bear market. However, mm. I think, and this, this incorporates Elliott waves, maybe a little bit too complex to really go deep into it, but more or less what I'm looking for is ultimately something along the lines of this. Maybe oh, wow. not new lows, mm -hmm. but that would be the, the ultimate scenario for me. So now that we've started initiating this initial moves, I'm ultimately looking at something along the lines of this, then maybe a bigger retrace, really big retracement coming in, like a really big one. Mm -hmm. And then one more push up before we start a longer downtrend again. Um, that would be so interesting. Super so, macro still bearish. Yeah, interesting. So do you do you think that you don't think the bottom is in? Um yeah, good question. Um yes, and uh, you know, so this is the thing. <laughs> it could be, it could be. Mm -hmm. However, if we reclaim fifty thousand dollars, which is really far away still, then I would say, like, okay it's likely that the bull market is ongoing. Until then, I'm still under the impression that this could still be a B wave, which is a second part of a correction, which is a really big, big relief rally, a major relief rally, high time frame, before you get the capitulation phase. Um, it could be that, because let's, let's be honest, it does look like a, it could be a nice bottom. I'm not going to lie about that. So about whether we have whether this is the new bull market or this is ultimately going to end up in another uh, strong downtrend, multi-month uh, downtrend, that is a little bit 50-50 for me still. Um, however, I do want to mention that I'm, I'm not against being, you know, this going higher. However, what for me, this kind of holds my expectations in check, which for mm -hmm. me, like, let's say, ultimately this $50,000 region is a the biggest level on the chart really so you know this is why i'm, I'm not going to be overly turning bullish when we arrive here this is for me a massive massive take profit level going to be whether it's the bull market or not so that's a big level because i know that we could potentially go down from there if we don't perfect you know then i still have a part of my trade open and then let the bull market come <laughs> right right Interesting, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of leaning toward the the bottom, of, uh, at least the bottom of the cycle is in. Just by analyzing the, the four-year halving cycle, give or take, uh, it seems to me that the bottom of the cycle is in. We're about a year out from the halving, which means we're probably going to get some kind of a double bottom, whether or not we put in a new low or put in a higher low. It depends. We've done both in the past. But uh I uh I don't know if I should admit this, but I have more spot Bitcoin than I've ever had in my life. So I uh was buying pretty aggressively under 20k. Um but yeah, yeah I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> we'll have to wait yeah, and see we, what happens. <laughs> we will. I mean, same for me, you know. So even though I'm I'm uh I'm macro, not necessarily ultra bullish yet, right? Um, I am trading the chart. So if I see signs of certain consolidation or slowing of the trend, for example, you know, uh, I do I do have to admit I was a little bit late uh, because this was holiday season as well. So for me is really when I came back into the uh, into into actively trading and everything like that it was more like January. Mm. With, hence the reason why this uh, $20,600 for me was the ultimate gift because it was the first real pullback that we had. Right. But yes, uh, I did acknowledge the fact that the sign uh, that the chart showed signs of strength. Uh, and despite my bias being bearish at the time still, um, I did I did bought Bitcoin. Yeah. Nice. Because I trade the charts, not my bias in the end. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah. So... Uh... Mike, man, I really appreciate you coming onto the channel and uh, let everybody know where can they find you on social media, YouTube, all that. Uh, where can people get, right. get get a hold of you? Okay, cool. So uh, you can find me on Twitter under the Twitter handle uh, just Mike underscore crypto. Uh, this is where I tweet a bunch of random stuff, shower thoughts, but I also share my, uh, my views uh, and updates on the markets from time to time. Um, I also have a YouTube channel where I post videos about everything trading related, market updates, and I do live streams as well. 
uh, where I'm really going really deep into the charts and talk about the markets. The handle is the same as on Twitter. It's also uh, at just Mike underscore crypto. And the channel name is called Mike Williams. Um, as a matter of fact, I'll be starting a, uh, a new series uh, on that channel within the next two weeks where I will be doing short market updates every single day publicly on YouTube. And I'll be sharing my analysis for the day, how I'm going to personally looking to trade that particular day. So I think that's going to be very cool, uh, fun, and also refreshing in the space, I think. So I would say be sure to go to that channel, uh, subscribe so you will not miss the announcement if you're interested. And, um, you know, then you get also notifications for when it, uh, when it starts and, uh, yeah, Jason, thank you for having me on a lot. Um, I had a lot of fun, uh, really appreciate what you're doing as well. Spreading the love, being a positive voice in the crypto space, my friend. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate that, bro. And, uh, honored to have you on the channel and everybody go check out Mike on YouTube, follow him on Twitter. You will not be disappointed. And, uh, with that being said, everybody, God bless. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace. Cheers. Bye-bye.